boxes or briefs. <laughs> <laughs> boxer briefs. Oh, boxer sweet. briefs, yeah. Briefly in boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Movie Phones Unscripted. I'm Robert Pence and this is Stephanie Meyer and that one's Kristen Stewart. We're here to talk about our film Twilight. We're going to ask each other some questions and some of your questions as well as some of our own. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with the first question. Annie in Phoenix, Arizona wants to know in, in what ways you relate to Bella, Kristen. I was like more self-conscious when you guys like, asked me this question. <laughs> uh, I think she's who you experience the story through. So you sort of put your. I think every girl projects their own personalities onto her. So it was weird playing the part because I didn't feel like it was a big departure. I was there was no distinct character I was playing. I was really just this girl in this like extravagant situation. Okay, what was the most difficult scene for you to film? Probably the scene where I have to look at the the guys who are hassling Bella and uh, and this the line the description of the script was he gives a a look so devilish so animalistic in its rage <laughs> it's that it, in its fury that it terrifies four grown men and coming out with my little bouffant hairdo, white, <laughs> white makeup and a pea coat is quite difficult to look very scary. I wouldn't have guessed that one. It's cool. It was tough. I nearly quit because of it. Really? <laughs> oh, my God. He almost punched me in the face like five <laughs> times. <laughs> I should have been on set that day. <laughs> uh, which scene were you most excited to see translated from book to screen? I mean, I think the, the main one for me was always the meadow because, you know, that's where it all started. That was... The one that I saw in my head first, so I wanted to see that. And I, but I think I was surprised that in the end, the one that I don't think I there's like the most what's the word like delight in seeing was the baseball scene. Mm -hmm. I mean that one was just so much fun to watch. It kind of blew me away. So there's those two. All right, if you could remake any movie, like from any period, recent, forever ago, and be the star, what would one did you do? I would love to have been the voice of Mowgli in the Jungle Book. <laughs> uh, tell us one thing about yourself that most people don't know. Uh, I'm really cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lame. Oh my god, we cannot do this. <laughs> I, tell, I tell everybody every. The one thing people don't know is I tell everybody everything. All the time. Well, maybe people do know that because I keep telling them everything. I already, I've already repeated myself. I re start repeating myself to people who I've met for two days. What has been your favorite experience since becoming an actor? I just got to, uh, I don't want to like entirely speak out of, I can't even talk about this yet because it's not how, I've just had like the greatest experience and I can't talk about it yet because it's not like a solid, who knows whether the businessmen are going to work out their business deals and get me on this movie, but um, I think I may play like one of the most iconic parts that I am acquainted with that I love so much. It's like in my one of my favorite books. Um, I think I may have gotten that part. And that was like the first time. I've gotten a lot of parts in my life, but I'm never like, oh, I got a job, I just booked it. I'm always like, okay, they shouldn't have hired me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, on this one, I was literally like creeping up Laurel Canyon, getting back into the valley, and it just didn't fit. Like I was busting out of this little car. Like the energy, it did not like control. It was like the most elated moment of my life. I went to the meeting and he was just like, "Yeah, okay, we're gonna do this together." And I was like, "I flipped. I just flipped. Probably that making that movie will be the coolest thing." Have you had any more dreams about Edward and Bella? If so, what happened? I had kind of had one um, after I was working on New Moon. Uh, I had this weird. I was like sleeping in the guest room because my husband had a horrible cold, and so I wasn't like in my normal surroundings and I had this dream that I kind of I don't know how much it was a dream and how much I thought about it afterwards because I was kind of out of it but that um, Edward actually showed up and told me I got it all wrong and like you know he existed and everything but uh, you know, he couldn't live off the animals and he really was you know how do I like any other vampire and I, I kind of got the sense he was about to kill me um, it was really terrifying and it was bizarrely different from every other 
time I've thought about his character. And, and so then that was cool in a way, too, because it added something extra to my view of him. Wow, oh, that's weird. Can you just make your best sexy face? <laughs> Please. That's a request, not a question. <laughs> Can you? Can you do it? I thought I was already doing it. <laughs> no, um, uh, no, I need to get. You know, I can't. I can't um, saturate the market too much. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, what other projects are in store for you? Do you plan to write a sequel to The Host, or will you finish Midnight Sun? Just want to say right now, I didn't leak it. <laughs> yeah. I actually know that. Oh, really? Did yeah. you actually I do know someone? that. You know who? <laughs> so, like, investigate it. Uh, yeah. Um, hey. No, it wasn't. Oh, come on. Like, I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> no, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't I thought it, it was me for a bit because I, really? I forgot where I put it on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, you know, if it been you, you wouldn't be live right now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. Um, no, I mean, this is what I've learned in the last six months. If you say, this is my next project, and you're just answering a question, like, really, you know, honestly, what am I working on right now? Um, all of a sudden, people expect in uh, six months they're going to be able to go buy this book on the shelf. And it doesn't work that way. First of all, it takes a lot longer than that. And secondly, um, I change my mind all the time. You know, I'll start a book and be like, this, is, this sucks. I'm moving on and do something else. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of other projects. And right now, I want to do something new. I don't want to do a world I've already done. I want to do something fun and different. So, But I'm not going to say because it's not going to be on the shelves in six months. It's going to take two or three years if I can get home and actually work on something. Because I have things to do, Rob. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> Kristen, Sarah Portugal. in Portugal wants you to describe Robert in two words. In Portuguese. Ooh. <laughs> Why two? Why not just one? Or three? It's funny because I know... I know very well, better than anybody else, a version of Rob. I mean, like, in... Because you have, like, a very complete experience making a movie. Like, you go through something with somebody or whatever... Um, and then that's like this separate little thing. Um, I don't feel like I know him very well. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh. He's such a great actor. He's just, just like, he's, you... how about good actor? <laughs> <laughs> good person. I think I've heard you say before that you feel like Bella's like a pretty separate thing from you. What are the differences? You know, Bella and I think completely differently. And, you know, when I went to write this, it wasn't something I thought about because I was just doing it for fun. But I think it's really natural that I created a character that let me live a life I didn't know. Because why would I want to write something that I've already experienced? You know, I, I brought a few things that I experienced and added them in later. But really, um, Bella is like 100% more mature than I was at that age. I, I was really sheltered, and she had to be the grown-up all the time. And, and I kind of admired that when I would see that in people around me. Like, that's got to be hard. What is that like? Um, my life is really easy, and hers isn't. Uh, and then she gets to have this, like, fantasy love affair, and she's just normal. Um, that also did not happen to me. <laughs> um, I, I dated all, like, the Mike Newtons and the Eric Yorkies in my life, and um, I never did even see an Edward. So that was all part of this fantasy that, that I got to live for three months, and that was really cool. What were your personal experiences that you put in the book later? Um, there's one that I just thought would be funny. Uh, because I was writing a book about vampires and the fact that I did pass out in biology because other people were bleeding all around me. Um, <laughs> I thought it was kind of hilarious for a vampire book, so that actually happened. <laughs> what was the funniest thing that happened during filming? When you tried to pick me up off the floor and couldn't. <laughs> uh, made me feel like a, a gorilla. <laughs> um... Rob pulled his groin that day. It was really problematic. <laughs> and it's really quite funny. The outtake is really very funny. Uh, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Oh, it's all right. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you to Movie Phone. And thank you for watching and sending in your questions. Please check out our movie, Twilight. It's much more interesting than this interview. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. So what's your next project? <laughs> <laughs> Writing the Rob Pattinson story. It's a tell-all. <laughs>